Hello, this video is about electrolysis and in this one we're going to have a look at what happens at each electrode within an electrolysis cell. So here we've got an electrolysis cell um, as it would be set up. So you'll see a diagram like this um, lots of times in kind of past papers and things like that it might come up in your exam. So as soon as you can identify that you've got um, some sort of liquid in a vessel and you've got two conductive pieces of material, you've got a power supply and you've got something ionic, you can assume that you're looking at uh, a question about electrolysis. So I'm quickly going to label this diagram so that we know what it is that we're actually looking at. Um, so we have got um, power supply here. We have So it could be like a, a cell, a little individual um, cell of a battery. It could be one of those big um, plug-in things that you get at school, um, but some sort of power supply to provide voltage. We've got some wires. And the wires are connecting the power supply to two electrodes. So we've got an electrode here and we've got an electrode here. And we've got, we can see here that the positive electrode I've drawn on the left and the negative electrode I've drawn on the right. They could be drawn either way around at this stage. So um, just make sure that you're aware which one's which. And they've got special names as well. So the positive electrode is known as the anode. Okay, so the anode is the positive electrode. And the negative electrode is the cathode. Okay, so we've got the anode and we've got the cathode. And they're dipped into a solution or a liquid. So here I've tried to show that we've got some sort of solution or liquid. And the solution or liquid is known as the electrolyte. And it'll be some sort of ionic compound. So it could be um, sodium chloride, normal salt, either molten or dissolved. It could be aluminium oxide. So that's one that we use in industry to make sure that we can get some aluminium out so we can make kind of airplanes and Coke cans and all that kind of thing. Um, and your electrolyte is made out of ions. So you will have in there some positive ions and some negative ions. Obviously, if you did this in a lab, you wouldn't be able to see these. These are too small for us to see, but I've drawn them out so that we know what's going on. And then you've just got some sort of beaker or electrolysis cell or vessel. So these are the keywords that you need to know about how we name everything. So we've got the anode, we've got the cathode, they're both types of electrode, and we've got the electrolyte, and then obviously power supply and wires. And the idea of electrolysis is that we can split something up using electricity. So um, electrolysis, if we split that word up, electro is to do with electricity, as it sounds. And lysis means to split. So what we're looking at is we're taking some sort of ionic compound like sodium chloride and we're splitting it up so we can make sodium and we can make chlorine. Or at least sometimes we can. We can make other products as well. Um, you might take aluminium oxide and obviously we want to be making some things out of aluminium. So you will split it using electricity into aluminium and into oxygen. And you should know that for some metals, those at the top of the reactivity series, Electrolysis is the best way to extract those metals because they're too reactive um, to be able to reduce them with carbon. So electrolysis will extract things like potassium and aluminium, which are higher up the reactivity series. OK, so let's have a little look at what happens when we actually switch the power on. So at the moment, I've highlighted these as being the positive electrode and the negative electrode. At the minute, they're not actually charged um, because the power supply is not switched on. But when I do switch the power supply on over here, this one will become positively charged and will be our anode and this one will become negatively charged and that will be the cathode. So when we switch the power on, what we get is the standard rule that opposite charges attract. So I'm going to write that there because that is huge and that is all electrolysis is essentially is opposite charges attract. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got some positive ions and we've got some negative ions. And when we switch the power on, these are going to move around. So turn the power on. All the positive ions will move towards the negative electrode. And the negative ions will move towards the positive electrode. So 
we get something like this. Here we go. And it'll end up something like that where they all attract like that. So if we want to use um, some good language, let's change the color of my pen. These are anions. So negative ions are called anions and they move towards the anode. So anions are negative, but the anode is positive. And these ones are called cations. Positive ions are called cations. And cations move towards the cathode. So confusingly, the cathode is negatively charged, but the cations are positively charged. And one more thing I will point out just at the moment is um, why this is a liquid or well, it's molten, as we've put over here. So the reason it's molten is because you can't do it when you've got a solid. So if I rearrange our ions um, in a solid, they would look a little bit more like this at the bottom. So the problem is uh, here we've got charged particles. We've got ions that hold charge, but they're not free to move because they're so strongly attracted to each other. So we have to either melt or dissolve. And in this case, we're just doing molten because that's the most simple version of electrolysis. So when we melt this substance, all of these um, ions that are in the lattice will break apart and will stop being in the lattice. And they're now able to move, which means when they're spread out across the entire electrolyte, as soon as we switch the power supply on, the negative ones go to the anode and the positive ones go to the cathode because they're now free to move. So um, explaining why an ionic substance has to be either molten or dissolved for this to work comes up all the time in exams. So you just need to be able to say that the ions must be free to move and carry the charge throughout the electrolyte. Okay, so this um, video is actually about what goes on at the electrodes. So let's zoom in a little bit and have a little think about what's going to go on at each electrode. So here we've got a load of negative ions. So let's have a little think about what a negative ion actually is before we start. And then that might help us to understand what's going on. So common negative ion, let's go for a chloride ion. Okay, so chlorine, normal chlorine is in group seven and it's got 17 electrons. So it looks something like this. Oops, that was rubbish, but there you go. It's got seven electrons in its outer shell like that. Okay, that's a chlorine atom. And when it becomes a chloride ion, what's going on is we've got a little electron sitting here and chlorine wants to fill its outer shell. So that electron will go in there and it will fill chlorine's outer shell to make a chloride ion. So the product of this looks like this. So this one is a chloride ion. And what's happened is we've added in this additional electron, which means when it originally had 17 positive protons in its nucleus and it had 17 negative electrons, it was neutral, but it's now actually got 18 negative electrons, which means overall this ion is negatively charged. So we can put some big brackets around it and a negative sign there. So when I draw this here, a circle with a minus in, what I'm actually representing is a whole ion like this. And these things are floating around in solution. So why is this thing negative? It's because it's got that extra electron that it shouldn't normally have. Okay. And the whole point of electrolysis is when something reaches the electrode, it can become discharged, it can lose its charge and go back to being neutral. Okay, so have a little think. How would an ion like chloride end up back being normal chlorine? So it's essentially the opposite of what we've just done. So we said that chlorine would gain an electron to become chloride, but now we've already got chloride, how would it become chlorine? It's gonna lose that extra red electron there, okay? So when these negative ions, chloride ions, for example, arrive at the electrode, they will lose their spare electron and they will become chlorine. Okay, so let's draw some electrons on so that you can see what I mean. Okay, so here's our chloride ions. I've shown them a little bit more reasonably now. This, this red circle on each one of them, that's a spare electron that the normal atom wouldn't have. So when the ion approaches the electrode, it can lose that electron and it sticks it on there. This ion will arrive over here 
and it will lose that electron and stick it into the um, electrode, into the anode. So let's have a look. This one's going to come along and it's also going to lose that spare electron, put it onto the anode, and they're all going to do that. So they all arrive at the electrode and they all drop off their electron. Now, once they've all dropped their electron off and their electrons are all in here, these chloride ions are now no longer negative. They are now neutral chlorine. Try and write over that negative sign like that. Okay, so they're now normal neutral chlorine. And chlorine on its own doesn't exist naturally because this is not a particularly stable arrangement of its electrons. So if it doesn't turn into an ion, the other thing it can do... Oh, lost an L. Let's stick that back on there. The other thing it can do is it can pair up. So you can get two of these pairing up together, and that's what they do. So one of these will pair up with another one of these, and they will form a pair of chlorine atoms, which becomes a chlorine molecule. So here at the electrode, two chlorines will pair together, and they'll form chlorine molecule, which is given off as a gas. So you produce Cl2 gas. And we can write an equation for what's going on with chlorine. So what we've actually got, let me draw it out in atoms first so that you can see where everything's coming from. So we've got chloride ion here, which is negative. So we put a little negative sign on there. Chloride ion is becoming a chlorine atom. Now, as we know, chlorine atoms can't go around on their own. So let's show what it actually goes around in. It goes around in pairs. So we will stick those together like that. So it forms a chlorine molecule. Now, if you want to produce a chlorine molecule like that, you will need two of these ions to start with. So let's form another chloride ion. There we go. So we've got two of those. And they're becoming, by pairing up together, they're becoming this molecule here. But when they do, they have to lose this electron and they have to lose that electron. And we know that those electrons have gone into the anode. So that means that when they pair up, they are going to leave two electrons left over. Okay, and we can write this as an ionic half equation. So the equation would be two lots of the chloride minus ion becomes a chlorine molecule, which is Cl2, plus two electrons left over, which go into the anode. This is a half equation for what happens at the anode. Okay? So that's what's actually going on. Now, with the diagrams, I think that makes it quite easy to understand. Now, in reality, you wouldn't want to be drawing out those diagrams every single time. So I'll show you how I would um, figure out what's actually going on if I had to write it from scratch. So uh, let's get rid of it all again. Get rid of all of that, and we'll get rid of this as well. And I'll show you how I do it without drawing the actual diagrams. Hopefully, they help you to understand where it comes from. But what I would actually do is I would figure out what's arriving at the anode. Well, what arrived originally was chloride minus ions. They arrived. And we know that they're going to become chlorine elemental. Okay, so the elemental chlorine is Cl. And you should know that it comes in twos. It's diatomic. If you don't, you'll learn that along the way. You need to learn which things are diatomic. And then all you have to do is balance it. So this time, instead of uh, balancing an equation just for elements, you also have to balance the charges as well. So let's balance the elements first. How many chlorines on the left and how many chlorines on the right? Well, we don't yet have enough chlorines on the left, so we're going to have two of those to match with our two chlorines on the right. And that, charges our, uh, that balances our elements. Now we need to balance our charges. So in terms of charges, we've actually got, on the whole left-hand side, two negative charges. And on the whole right-hand side, this doesn't have any charges, so it's neutral. So what you can add in is some electrons. You can add in however many electrons you need to, either on this side or on this side, to make it balance. Okay? If you add electrons on this side, then your 2 minus is going to become even more negative because electrons are negative, and that, will, that won't balance with the neutral over here. Alternatively, you could put electrons on this side. That would make this side negative to match this side, which is negative. So the correct way to put it is the electrons go on that side. So we have our 2Cl minus going to Cl2, 
and we put some electrons on this side. And we're going to have to put two electrons in because it's one for each chloride ion. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Two electrons like that. And that is how I come up with the half equation without actually drawing all the atoms and ions out. Okay, so you need to be able to draw those or write those ionic half equations for what's going on at the anode. So I'm just going to tidy this up in case you want to um, take a screenshot or anything of this particular slide. And there you go. So that's what's going on at the anode. So now we can have a look at what's going on in the cathode with the positive ions and figure out what's going on. So before I leave this at the anode, let's just consider what happened when these chloride ions arrived here. We can see that they dropped their electrons off at the anode. And this anode is part of a circuit. So when they drop their electrons off, these electrons are pushed around the circuit by the voltage coming from the power supply, the potential difference, and they will end up at the cathode. So the electrons are dropped here, but they end up going and filling the other electrodes, which we'll see now. Okay, so here we've got the cathode, and we can see that electrons have been dropped off at the anode, pushed around the circuit, and they've arrived here at the cathode. So this cathode, the reason it's negatively charged is because it's absolutely full of electrons. So all these electrons sitting on the cathode, waiting for something to happen. Now, in solution, as soon as the power supply is switched on, the positive ions, the cations, they all begin to arrive at the cathode. Okay, so there they go. Now let's do the same thing we did before. Let's consider what a cation actually is and how it turned out to be what it is. So let's use sodium as an example. Didn't mean to move people around. Let's have a look. So sodium is a common one because we look at sodium chloride as a standard salt a lot of the time. So sodium is in group one and it's got 11 electrons. So sodium looks like this. There's 10 electrons and it's got one in its outer shell and that's why it's in group one. Now that's not a stable electron arrangement for sodium. So this is a sodium atom. So sodium will hope, if I just show that outer electron as a spare one that it doesn't need, Hope, hopefully sodium will expel that electron, it will lose that electron, and that will leave it with a full uh, stable electron arrangement, a full outer shell. Okay, so it's lost that electron, that electron's sitting out over here. Okay, and that means that now, because sodium has 11 positive protons in its nucleus, and it did have 11 negative electrons making it neutral, it's lost one, so it's now only got 10 negative electrons, which means overall this sodium ion is positively charged. So we can put some brackets around it like this, and we can put a positive charge over there, and this is our little negative electron that it's lost. So again, when I show one of these circles with a cross in it, what I'm actually referring to, what I'm simplifying it down to is this, but it means one of these. It's a full ion with protons, neutrons, and electrons, and charge uh, on the whole particle because we've got an imbalance in protons and electrons. Okay, they don't cancel each other out. So each one of these represents a full one of these. Now, this sodium ion is positively charged because it's lost its outer electron. But as you know, when we're in electrolysis and an ion turns up at the electrode, it can be discharged and it can turn back into its original atom. So what we're looking at is how do we get this ion to turn into this atom? Well, if we're going to do that, we need to add an electron back in. So this one is going to gain an electron to become sodium atom. Okay, this ion is going to gain an electron. And we can see that here. So we've got um, all of the electrons sitting in the electrode. We've got all of these waiting to gain their one outer electron. So each of these electrons can bounce onto one of those. And as they do, each of these will become a normal, typical sodium atom with one electron in its outer shell. So let's see if we can show that. Okay, so here's an electron sitting in our cathode. And it pops onto the outer shell of a sodium atom. The outer outer shell, so one further out than this. So it pops onto there. And this sodium ion has now got its outer electron. It's now got 11 positive protons. Um, and it's got 11 negative electrons, so this is now a neutral sodium atom. Okay, so there's our new neutral sodium atom. Another electron will be floating about inside the cathode, and it will jump onto this atom, or this ion, sorry, and this positive sodium ion will become a sodium atom as it gets its extra electron, and it sits in its outer shell there. 
So that one's also become a normal neutral sodium atom, just like this. Okay, and the same will happen to this one, this one, and this one. There we go. So all of them pick up an electron from the cathode and they become neutral sodium atoms. And we can write a half equation for this one as well. So let's draw it out in ions first. So arriving at the cathode, we have got sodium ions that look something like this. I've simplified it down and not drawn all of the inner shells. And they're going to become sodium with the one electron in the outer shell, as it should be. Okay, normal neutral sodium. So we need to make sure that this can become this. We've got one sodium ion becoming one sodium atom, so that's absolutely fine. But what happens with the electron? So let's draw the electron in red as we have been doing so that you can see it. How does this become this? Well, you have to add an electron. So let's put that in there. You have to add on to it one electron and that will become this atom here. Okay, and obviously because the electron is negatively charged, that means that the charges will balance as well. So, written out as an equation, we write Na plus gains an electron to become Na. And as I said before, when you're writing these, you need to make sure that the elements balance. So we've got one sodium here and one sodium here. And you need to make sure that the charges balance as well. So on the whole left-hand side, we've got one positive and one negative. That makes it neutral overall. And on the whole right-hand side, we've got no charges at all, so that's neutral as well. So that's how we know that we've done a correct half equation, because the atoms balance and the charges balance as well. Okay, so just to summarise, positive sodium ions arrive at the cathode where they pick up an electron and they become typical sodium atoms. And that means that around the cathode, we will get a lump of sodium forming, or sometimes it falls to the bottom and you get a lump of sodium metal at the bottom so it'll be solid okay so let's put the two halves of our electrolysis cell back together and we can figure out what's going on in both of them okay so here's our electrolysis cell back together we switch the power on and all of the positive ions head over to the negative electrode so that's cations going to the cathode and all of the negative ions go to the positive electrode so that's the anions arriving at the anode we know that at the anode, positive, uh, negative ions arrive. So negative ions arrive and they're going to become neutral. So these lose electrons to become neutral. Oops. To become, not neutron, neutral. Okay. So at the, anode, at the anode, negative ions, which are these ones, let's grab one of those and stick it there, negative ions, lose electrons, become neutral. And the electrons, we know, they jump off there and they travel around the circuit and they end up sticking onto the cathode. Okay, so over at the cathode, we know that the cathode is full of electrons now because they have all come from here and they've travelled around and they're all sitting on the cathode. So all here, we've got loads and loads of electrons and positive ions are attracted towards that because they're oppositely charged so we know that positive ions they appear at the cathode and to become neutral they have to oh they have to gain electrons to become neutral okay so an example of positive ion, it'll look something like that. They arrive at the cathode, they gain electrons, and they become neutral. So if I just highlight some key features here, we have got the loss of electrons going on at the anode, and we've got the gain of electrons going on at the cathode, and we can give that a special word. So oil rig is your way to remember. It stands for oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons okay so that's your way of remembering it oil rig so let's go back to the anode over here we've got loss of electrons and oxidation is loss so what we can say is we can add on to here now negative ions are oxidized as in they lose electrons 
And over at the cathode, we've got the gain of electrons, and we know that that is known as reduction. So we can say that positive ions are reduced. And that is just another way of saying negative ions lose electrons and positive ions gain electrons. So you need to be able to use that language as well. Final little thing to take care with, if I give you an actual example, so if we say that at the anode we've got chloride minus ions and at the cathode we have got Na plus ions, okay, so they're all at the correct electrode, the actual name of the product needs to change. So when chloride arrives at the anode, it will pair up, so the product will not be chloride anymore, the product, because it's paired up, is chlorine gas which is Cl2. And the product over here, when you've got Na plus arriving, remember it gets discharged, so it becomes neutral. So the product on this side is sodium metal. In terms of observations, that means that when you produce sodium metal, you will either see it building up on this electrode or you'll see it falling down to the bottom. You'll see solid lump of metal. And on this side, because you're producing chlorine gas, and it is a gas, you will see bubbles or effervescence, and you'll see fizzing around this electrode. You can also then test that gas and make sure that it definitely is chlorine, and that will identify that what you've produced is Cl2, chlorine gas. Okay, Okay. so now it's your turn. So here are five uh, molten electrolytes that you might put into an electrolysis cell. We've got zinc chloride potassium chloride, magnesium bromide, aluminium oxide, and sodium iodide. And you can figure out which ion is going to go to the cathode, which one is going to go to the anode, and see if you can write some half equations. So if you want to pause the video now and have a go at this on some paper, see how you get on. And I will help you um, by going through the answers in a moment and telling you what the correct half equations would be. Okay, so for zinc chloride, um, go into the cathode. Well, the cathode is uh, negative. Okay, so you'll want whichever ion is positive. So your positive ion out of zinc and chloride is always going to be the metal. So your zinc 2 plus ion is going to go to the cathode. That means that your chloride minus ion is going to go to the anode. Okay, so let's work out the rest of those. So in potassium chloride, the metal, the positive metal, is going to go to the cathode, so that's K+, plus, and the negative non-metal is going to go to the anode, so again, that's Cl-. minus. Next one down, your metal cation is going to go to the cathode, so that's an Mg2 plus ion, and your negative non-metal, Br-, minus, is going to go to the anode. For aluminium oxide, your metal is going to go to the cathode, that's Al3+. Plus. And your non-metal is going to go to the anode, so that's O2 minus. And for the last one, sodium is a metal, so sodium plus goes towards the cathode, and I minus goes towards the anode. So, cathode, we're writing a half equation, so let's have a look. Zinc, we know that we start with zinc 2 plus, and we know that we want it to become normal zinc metal. So we're going to check that the, uh, the actual elements balance. We've got one zinc here and one zinc here. And then we'll balance the charges. So we need to put some electrons on. But it's whether you put them on this side or this side. So at the minute, we've got positive on this side and we've got neutral on that side. So if I put electrons on this side, that would balance out my uh, positive charge and it would make this side neutral, just like that side is neutral. So we'll go for electrons on that side. And we need two electrons. So it'll be... Let's get a rubber... So it'll be plus two electrons makes zinc. Okay, so we'll do the potassium one as well. So we know we're starting with K plus, and we know it's going to turn into K. And we know that we need to add some electrons. So do they balance? We've got K plus and K, so that's one K on each side. But we've got positive on this side and neutral on that side. So again... If we add electrons onto this side, that will balance out this positive charge and make the whole thing neutral. So plus electron. That's your half equation for potassium. Magnesium is Mg2+. It's going to become Mg. 
that means that we need to add some electrons in. And again, if you add them onto the left-hand side, that will neutralise your 2 plus charge on magnesium. Aluminium is Al3 plus. We know it's going to become aluminium. And we know we've got to add some electrons. And again, we're going to add them onto the left-hand side. So plus 3 electrons. That makes all of this side neutral overall to match this side, which is neutral as well. And the final one, sodium plus, becomes normal sodium by gaining an electron. So that's what they look like there. So at the cathode, we get gain of electrons, which is also known as reduction. So all of these in this column are going to be shown as gaining electrons, which they do. Zinc plus electrons, potassium plus electrons, magnesium plus electrons. They're all gaining electrons to become the neutral solid metal. So let's have a look at what happens at the next one. So let's choose a different colour. The anode, if we know that there's gain of electrons at the cathode, there is loss of electrons at the anode, and that's known as oxidation. So we need to show these ions losing electrons. So arriving at the anode, we have got chloride minus. It's going to become chlorine, but we know that chlorine is diatomic because it's in group 7, it goes round in twos. So the first thing to do is to balance this for elements. So we've got one chlorine going in and two coming out. That means we need two ions going in to begin with. And that means that the elements are balanced, but now we need to add electrons. So again, if we add electrons on that side, then your two minus is going to become even more negative because electrons are also negative. That means you'd end up with negative on the left-hand side and neutral on the right. Alternatively, if you put your electrons on the right-hand side, that means that the left would still be negative and the right-hand side would now be negative as well because you're giving it some negative electrons. So the, balance, uh, the charges would balance. So your electrons are going to go on the right-hand side. And this time you need two electrons because you've got two negatives here. You're going to need two negatives there. So plus two electrons. Let's get rid of that working out. There we go. That's your equation for what happens to chloride ions. Two chloride ions becomes chlorine molecule plus two electrons. And as I said, at the end anode, we're losing electrons. So that's why the electrons are on the right-hand side. They're a product on their own. They're left over. So I like to read this as two chloride ions becomes chlorine molecule with two electrons left over because they've been kicked out. They've been lost. Let's do the next one. So the next one, chloride ions, oh, chloride ions again, arrives at the anode. We know it's going to become a chlorine molecule. We know that we need two chloride ions to make a full chlorine molecule, and it's going to lose electrons, so we're going to end up with two electrons left over. So that's the same, uh, the same equation again. Then we've got bromine. So your bromide ions arrive at the anode. They're going to become bromine. It also goes around in twos because it's also in group seven. That means that if it's going to go around in twos in the product, you have to start with two of them in the reactant. So big two there. And then you need to balance for charges. So bromide becomes bromine and leaves over two electrons because they've been lost from the bromide ions. And again, you can double check. That means that on the left hand side, you've got negative charges. And on the right hand side, you've got negative charges. Two negatives here and two negatives there. So that's correct. Right, your next one is oxide. So your oxide ions arrive at the anode and they become oxygen element, which you should know is diatomic as well, goes around in twos. If you're going to end up with two oxygens, you've got to start with two oxygens, so we need to put two there. And then you need to add some electrons. Now let's be really careful with our charges. On this side, you've got two minus charge on oxygen, but you've doubled it up by putting the big two in, so you've actually got four minuses on this side. So you're going to have to add four electrons on that side. So make sure you get your number of electrons right. So it'd be plus four electrons. And that's to make sure that your four minuses on this side balance out with your four minuses on the left hand side. You've got to balance your charges. So look closely at that one and make sure you understand it. So that's your half equation for what happens to oxide ions. And then finally, we've got iodide ions. So your iodide minus turns up at the anode, and we know it's going to become iodine, 
which is diatomic, it goes round in twos. If it's going to end up in twos, you're going to have to start with two of them. So big two goes there. And then you need to sort out your charges. Again, we're losing electrons, so your electrons are going to end up on the right-hand side. And if you've got two minuses here, because you've got two singly negative charges, you're going to need two negative charges here. So we'll put plus two electrons. And there's your half equations for those five electrolytes. So I hope that's helped you. I hope the practice worked out well and I hope you were able to do them. And if not, I hope my feedback has now enabled you to be able to do them yourself. But thank you for watching and I hope that that helped.